Welcome students to social studies class. Today we are doing social studies for SHS 2. Our topic for discussion is leadership and followership. But before we start this lesson, we want to know the objectives for this lesson so that even your own homes you will be able to assess yourself after the lesson. By the end of this lesson, every student will be able to what? Explain leadership and who a leader is. Two, will be able to know, identify Three levels of leadership. Three, we'll be able to identify at least two types of leadership styles, their characteristics, merits, and demerits. As you all know, in every human society, we need leaders to stay the affairs of that group. Even in the animal kingdom, there is the lion king who, who ensures that all the activities that goes on in the bush is taken care of. So, how much more we human beings, we need leaders. So as a result of that, we want to discuss leadership. Leadership, as you all know, is a process of influencing people. A process of influencing people towards the attainment of a certain goal. It means that that group has already set up its own goals its own objectives, its own purpose. So the leader is only supposed to influence these people or the followers or his subordinates in order to achieve the goals and aspirations of the group. So if you talk about leadership, leadership simply means So leadership is a process of influencing people to achieve the goals and aspirations of the group. This therefore tells us that there should be somebody who should be able to drive this, who should be able to motivate people, who should be able to spearhead this achievement of the goals, and that is the leader. So at this point in time, who then is a leader? At this point, who is a leader? A leader, as you know, is a person who has the authority to direct people to achieve the goals and aspirations of the group. A leader is a person who has the authority to direct people, to motivate people, to achieve the goals and aspirations of the group. And that is who a leader is.
as I said earlier, a leader is a person who has the authority, who has the authority to direct and motivate his, all, his subordinates towards the attainment of the group's goals. So every group has its own goals, has its own aspiration, and as a result of that, the leader directs, guides, motivates his people in order to achieve the set goals of the group. For instance, in this class, we have the class prefect. The class prefect directs and controls, he guides all the students here in order that there will be silence and peaceful lessons in this classroom. So the leader is very, very important. Now, so if you come to a society in which we are in now, especially in this school, we have got leaders at every level. The devil gives you the indication that there are leaders everywhere you go. For instance, in this classroom, there is a class leader. Outside the classroom, there are leaders because we have got prefects who we have all elected as leaders. Apart from that, there are teachers who are form masters, house masters, and what have you. It goes all the way up to the headmaster of the school. It therefore gives you the education that there is leaders here. There are various levels of leadership in this school. So now let's look at the levels, the levels of leaders, the levels of leadership in this school. So in this area, as I said, there are levels of leadership, as I said, from the class prefect level all the way to the headmaster. It means, therefore, that every leader at various levels take decisions. And in this area, as I said, the decision that is taken is based on the level of leadership. So the lower the level of leadership, the lower decisions that can be taken. The higher the level of the leadership, the higher the decisions that can be made. So, now let's take it to the outside. As I said, in this school, the lower is from the class prefect all the way to the headmaster. So now we go out. Let's start from our homes. In our homes, we have our fathers who are the leaders of the home. Your father or my father or fathers are responsible to take care of the activities in the home. So they take care of all activities at home. They supervise our activities at home. They are supposed to ensure that the aim of the family is achieved. So they supervise all the activities. In our father's absence, our mothers continue doing this job. That is it. Now when you move away from the family or from the home and you go to the family. At the family level, you have the emotional pain. The emotional pain is, is also in charge of all the family affairs. He takes care of everything that goes on in the family. So he also controls, he also directs all the activities in the family. So the Bishop Penny is very, very important. So the Bushyapeni controls, directs all activities in the family. So when we come to this level, even the father 
who was controlling activities home. When it comes to this level, he is also lower. He is under the Abushua Penny. So the Abushua Penny has more power to take more decisions concerning the family more than your father. Now, when we move higher, we can move on and on and we go to where we have other people coming in. For instance, we elect people in our community. So the whole community or nation we conduct elections for president, our MPs, assembly members, all these people are elected by us and because they are elected by us they occupy certain high positions in order that they will be able to take decisions for the general good of the people of this country or the people of that area so we elect our president it therefore gives you the indication that in this country though we have good people at the lower level who take decisions but it goes all the way to the office of the president so the president is the final authority that takes decisions for all the people in this country. Apart from that, he has also got his MPs who helps parliament, they are our representatives. They help the president to implement or make policies readily available for us. Our local authorities too, we have our assembly members. We have our assembly members who have for the local authorities to also run well. So these are various levels. And even in your church, you have the church, you have, if you are Catholic, you have the Reverend Father or the parish priest that comes all the way down. You have the church president and other people. In other societies too, they have also got leaders. Even here, where we have got students here, we have got denominational heads. All these people take decisions. But remember this. The higher the authority, the, the higher the power to take decisions in the state. I'm sure you are clear. Good. Now that we know we have leaders in our society, and they move all the way from down to the bottom or from the top down, then how then do we get leaders? How do we get leaders? So there are several ways and means by which we have leaders. So, we want to know the ways or the means of getting our leaders in the state. First, we can talk about appointments. Leaders in the state, we get them through appointment. For instance, the government or the president of Ghana appoints his ministers of state. He appoints them and gives them responsibility. He appoints his cabinet. So ministers of state are appointed. by the president. Apart from that, other important people, other important officers other important officers of the state, they are appointed by the president. For instance, these important officers of the state may include the chairman of the electoral commission, uh, the supreme or the superior court justices, all of them are appointed by the president. So they become leaders through appointing. So the minister for education was appointed by the president on his to work on his behalf. So he is a leader in education, but he was appointed. Apart from that, 
government of Ghana appoint headmasters. They appoint headmasters to ensure that education moves on well in our secondary schools. So headmasters are appointed. These and many other people got into their position through appointment. The second part is through elections. The second part is through elections. People get into offices or into leadership positions through the elections that are conducted either in that small group or in the whole country. For instance, the president the generality of the people of Ghana. All Ghanaians came together and elected the president. So the president is elected based on that. Apart from that, we have got our MPs, our members of parliament, we elect all of them. And in Ghana, we have 275. All the 275 MPs were elected by the people of the various constituencies in this country. Apart from them, we have got assembly members. Who are also assembly members are also elected by their local people to represent them at the various assemblies. So these prepare people first through appointment, secondly through elections. Another group of people we get we call themselves. another group of people call them self-appointment. They appointed themselves. And when I say this, sometimes we laugh. Who are these leaders who just appoint themselves? Example, the military governments The, the military government, they appointed themselves. They conducted coup d'etat and came to power. They are heads of state, but we didn't elect them. They appointed themselves to be there. Also, we have also got proprietors. Practice of schools. So I have established my own school. Nobody will now ask me who will be the head. Automatically, I will be the head of that school. I have appointed myself. Apart from that, we have got proprietors of other media houses. If somebody establishes his own media, and he is the owner of that media house, he is the overall boss there. He has appointed himself into that position. Another group, and that's a four. Another group, the fourth group, are the people that get their true inheritance. People assume certain positions or certain leadership positions through inheritance. And this is done normally in the monarchical system. Monarchical system. So if somebody comes from the royal family, and somebody, or there is vacancy, any member in the royal family can assume it is based on that same thing. So, so for example, in Ghana, we can think of all the paramount chiefs, including our own Asantene, he became the chief based on inheritance. 
If you go outside, you can feel it about there. That's a thing, eh? Elizabeth the second and several chiefs and several kingdoms that you know. All these people assumed into their office as a result of inheritance. They did not conduct, they were not appointed, they did not go through elections, they did not self-appoint themselves but through inheritance. They are from that royal lineage and as a result of that, from that royal, uh, royal lineage, they became leaders. About are the people that refer to as the charismatic leaders. Now, these are people who have got set, certain special natural characteristics and power that makes people love and draw to them. They have these natural or gifted characteristics and it draws people towards them. So, there are several people that have got the charisma and sometimes people are willing to die for them. So, there are people. Let's look at our own Kwame Nkrumah. of Ghana, who was a charismatic leader. He was able to canvas. People were able to support him. He was able to galvanize a lot of people from all sections of the public with other members to attain independence for Ghana. We can also think about the religious people when we can think about Jesus Christ, Muhammad, and what are we? All these people, they are charismatic. They are naturally endowed. They are naturally gifted. They have got something, they have got powerful oratory skills. And as a result of that, when they speak, they draw people towards them. These people, are, they also get into leadership position. Sometimes, they do not even come back for both. People just make them leaders. And they become leaders in their Areas. That is it. The sixth is my first one the situational leadership. A situation may happen, and in that particular circumstance, or during the Buhar, somebody may be appointed or selected to lead the group. And that's why referred to as situational leadership. There are several ways of getting leaders, and these are this I want you to know for now. Then the next thing that I want to discuss is what referred to as the types of leadership. Basically, there are four types of leadership. And this leadership is based on how they are able to influence their subordinates in order to achieve the aims and aspirations of the group. So, for now, today we are going to discuss only two of these leadership styles. The first one I want to discuss is one point of First 
what we discussed today is autocratic leadership. This is a type of leadership which power is absolutely vested in the leader. This is the This is, this is a type of leadership where power is vested in the leader alone. The leader does not consult anybody whenever he is taking decision. His interest is about the work. He is not interested in the welfare of the members. He does not consult. He doesn't think that anybody has got any idea to offer. So this person, what he is doing is that he absolutely vests power in himself and as a result of that his followers need to obey his followers need to obey they cannot challenge him nobody has the power to challenge him it is usually done in areas where there is always employment or work environment it is suitable It is suitable for work environment. The leader does not take care of the welfare of the people. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Nobody has the right to complain. Nobody has the right to even offer suggestions to the leader. And that is referred to as autocratic leadership. Sometimes there might be some risk at the work environment and they, maybe the subordinate or the workers might not be so knowledgeable in that area. So the leader will now implement this system. Do this, do that, don't do that, don't. So he, he dictates. He becomes a dictatorial in nature. He becomes a dictator. And that is why he to as autocratic leadership. Now let's look at the merits of autocratic leadership. The merits. Though sometimes when you look at it, it looks draconian. It looks so dictatorial. But there are some advantages that are attached to this. First is quick decision making. does not consult anybody. He comes out with all his own decision. And whenever he takes the decision, the decision that he takes is final. And it is implemented. So even if the decision is wrong, once the, the leader has made that decision, he will not consult anybody. So he does not need to consult people and for them to bring out the ideas. He has his own ideas and whatever he just thinks is good, he just brings it out and it's a decision and people or his subordinates have to implement it. So decision making is very quick. There's always achievement of goals. He has said he has made the decision and he has got his own target, his own decisions. So at the end of the day, whatever he wants to achieve is achieved. All the goals that he set. Because workers fear him. If he doesn't, if they don't do the thing well for him to meet his target or his, to achieve his goals, he will sack them. So as a result of that, they fear him and they just ensure that. The goals set are achieved. Hook or crook means they do that to achieve. 
Also, the leader Another thing is that the leader, before he takes all decisions, he accepts praise and blames. When every, everything goes on well, he is happy. He accepts it. Everybody praises him. He is the leader. He accepts praises. Whenever things do not so go wrong, uh, things also go wrong, they don't go right, and there is a blame, he accepts it. He knows that, ah, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have consulted this. So he also accepts blame for difficulties that he is not able to. And as soon as he accepts blame, he is willing and ready to ensure that he finds solutions to them. type of leadership is less expensive to operate. You don't need, you don't need to go through elections, you don't need to go through anything, anything. The treasury of asking people their views and all these things, you don't need to go through all these things. And it is cheap. You don't need to invest so much money. It is less expensive to operate. And that is, this and many others are the merits of this system. Now let's look at about three or so demerits. Two or three demerits of this system. Now this system comes Kills the initiatives of subordinates. Our elder people say that wisdom does not dwell in one head. So when you allow people to also profess certain decisions or help you in the decision making, you'll be able to make very good and insightful decisions. But the people who are supposed to help you to achieve, they don't have anything to say, they don't have anything to do. So the initiative that they have in themselves will also be lost. It will kill their initiative. And that is also one of the very dangerous things about this system. It also works. This system also works rancor and uprising among members. Members or the subordinates, they don't want to always be cajoled. They don't always be forced to do something. They also need to liberate themselves. So there is always hostility. There is always a rancor between the workers. And always try as much as possible to bring bitterness. There is always bitterness between the members. They always complain here and there. And that is one of the very bad things of this system. Then, there is absence of participation. Members or subordinates, they don't participate in anything. They only just watch us. They only just look home. Sometimes when they they may know what, that this decision of the leader might be wrong. But they, because they are not participating in the system, they are only just order here, left, right, and center to just go and do their work. So they always look, they don't participate in it at all. So whenever it goes on, there's a problem. Then finally, there is what referred to as it leads to no. Leads to low 
productivity. When the leader is there, the workers pretend to be working. So when he's not there, everybody finds his own way and his own things. So they don't produce in his absence. It is one of the very bad or the negative effects of this system, autocratic leadership. We want to end the lesson here. But for today, I want us to recap what we said. We talked about leadership, who a leader is and leadership. We talked about the various levels of leadership. We talked about the means by which we can get leaders in our society, in our country, in our groups. Then we started with the types of leadership styles. Today we discuss only the autocratic leadership style. When we meet next time, we will talk about the other leadership styles. But take this home, take this assignment for me. Your, your exercise today, exercise question one, explain A, leadership, B, leader. Question two, highlight three merits and three demerits of autocratic leadership style. Highlight three merits and three demerits of the autocratic leadership style. Full stop. Thank you. We meet again next week. Next week.